In this question, we are going to look at a satellite in orbit. For these questions, it kind it can kind of be a bit confusing because the gravitational questions are the gravitational equations are already a bit confusing. And then now we factor in the fact that there's a change in energy. All right, so let's do this question slowly together. Of course, in part A, they will warm you up first and ask you to state Newton's law of gravitation. Okay, law, we state law. No problem here. Okay, so Newton's law of gravitation carries two important points. The first point, you will talk about the proportionality equation. So I think this one most students know, m1, m2 over r squared. But a lot of students will forget the second point. Second point here is the fact that we are talking about a point mass. Okay, the second point here, we are talking about point mass. So make sure you mention this as well. Lah. All right, so now I'm going to write down the actual definition. Okay, so Newton's law of gravitation says that the gravitational force, I'll talk about the proportionality first, gravitational attractive force or gravitational force between, I want to get the point mass out of the way. So I'll say between two point masses, there'll be one of the points, is directly proportional to the product of the masses and inversely proportional to the square of their separation. So I tend to call this uh, warm-up questions or bonus marks, but you have to be careful and make sure you cover all the main points. All right, let's move on to B. A satellite of mass M is in a circular orbit about a planet of mass M. Okay, big boy, we have planet mass M here. We have a satellite here. I'm going to draw a tiny diagram at the side, okay? This satellite is mass small m. The product of gm is 4 times 10 to the power of 14 newton meter square kg negative 1. Okay, can. Planet may be assumed to be isolated in space, all right, by considering the gravitational force on the satellite and the centripetal force. Hmm, big hint here. Show that the kinetic energy is given by this expression. Okay, so first things first, I will think about the fact that if I want to find kinetic energy, Kinetic energy is actually equal to half mv square, right? So for me to come up with this equation, there's no v in this, there's no expression in terms of v. So I have to substitute v. I have to get rid of this v. By v, I need to, I need to get, you, get you out. But how do we find an expression for v? Well, now we need to maybe zoom in a bit and look at the orbit. So let's say I know that this uh, satellite is traveling at this tangential velocity v, and it's, it is technically speaking still moving in a circular orbit. Okay, so if it's moving in a circular orbit, definitely we have gravitational force attracting it, and this gravitational force provides centripetal force. Okay, and in fact, they tell you one gravitational force Fg, centripetal force Fc. So what I can say here is that your gravitational force provides centripetal force. So gravitational force provides centripetal force. All right. So Fg is equal to Fc. Well, gravitational force here will be G big M for the planet, small m for the satellite over r square. Okay, r is the radius. There they say here, ma, circular orbit of radius r. So here to here is r. Okay, gmm over r square, that will be their separation. And this one will be m v square over r. Miss, why you never use mr omega square because I want to substitute v and the v is here so I guess I rearrange and simplify this equation I should be able to find v okay so let's go we can cancel off the mass of the satellite 
okay because the satellite is the one that is moving in orbit and then uh, I guess we can cancel away one of the r so the only thing I left here I have here is v square is equal to gm over r so hence if I want to find kinetic energy which is half mv square right I can substitute lo. so this will be half m what is my v square g big m over r so finally what I will have here is kinetic energy is equal to g m m over 2r proven okay so whenever you show this kind of proof make sure you include the key steps number one you must have a statement something like gravitational force provides centripetal force centripetal force necessary is provided by gravitational force etc etc okay and then so this one will be b1 this mark here okay and then from here i guess if you write this sentence it will work lah. this fg is equal to fc also can but just write a sentence, lah, okay? Instead of just writing an equation, okay? So then, if I see this step, if I see this step and this step with substitution, you will get your final mark, M1. So I need to see everything. I need to see how you got to V square, and I need to see you putting in V square into half MV square to find the kinetic energy. All right? This proof is quite popular they've asked a few times so it's not that hard it consists of two steps step one equating gravitational force and centripetal force to find v square this v square is equal to gm or specifically you know it's actually v is equal to square root of gm over r this one is what we call orbital speed the speed of anything in this particular orbit will follow this one okay so first things first, you find the speed and then use half mv square to find the kinetic energy. All right, done. Part two. Oh, big satellite. Nice. Let me zoom out a bit. The satellite has a mass of 620 kilograms and is initially, okay, 620 kilograms, initially in circular orbit of radius 7.34. Okay, so the initial radius, which I will color blue, is this outer orbit. Okay. And then it also will have a new orbit. I think this one I color, I color green. This is my new orbit. Okay. So I guess I'll color this side so I can see the arrow. Great. Satellite has achieved to a new orbit. Hmm. I wonder if the satellite travels faster or slower. We shall see. Okay. Let us look at the next part of the question. Okay, this is the next part of the question. Okay, so there are two orbits. Resistive forces causes the satellite to move into the new orbit. So because of some resistance, uh, the satellite goes from the blue orbit to the green orbit. Determine for the satellite the change in, number one, kinetic energy. So if you recall in the previous part of the question, we have derived the equation for kinetic energy. Okay, kinetic energy EK here is half mv square which was also gmm over 2r okay you can refer back to the previous part of the question okay so if i want to find the change in kinetic energy i have to consider the fact that i have an initial kinetic energy at the radius of uh, 7.34 so this one is the initial kinetic energy and i also have the final kinetic energy at a new radius of 7.3 so I guess now what I'll do is I will put them together. Okay, so first things first, if I want to find the change in kinetic energy, okay, let me zoom in a bit. I want to find a change in kinetic energy, I will use the initial kinetic energy or the final, final minus initial so that I can tell whether it's increase or decrease. Okay, so hang on. Let's go this EK final minus ek initial so i'm gonna go gmm over two final radius new orbit minus gmm over two initial all orbit draw a line 
Now, you may be very excited and want to substitute. I highly recommend you factorize first. Less big numbers to substitute easier for the brain. Okay, so I'm going to factorize GMM over 2. Okay, so this is a common, the common stuff in the equation. See, this GMM over 2 is common. Can take it out. Kind of like a tip. Lah. So you don't get stuck when you have to deal with equation that looks like this. So I have 1 over RF minus 1 over RI. Okay, I think we can substitute now. Okay, we do have the value of GM. It is given in the question. Let me quickly show you. So if you go back to the front part of the question, the value of GM is 4 times 10 to the power of 14. So now put that into the equation. Okay, 4 times 10 to the power of 14. This is my GM. Okay. This GM is this whole thing. Okay. What about the mass of the satellite? Small m. Okay. So it is given in the question that the mass of the satellite is 620. All right. Divided by 2. If you are lost, refer to the question. The values are given. Okay. So RF, final orbit, initial orbit is the blue one. So this is RI. And RF is your 7.3. Okay. So I will have 1 over 7.3 minus 1 over 7.34. Now, if all your alarm bells are blaring and you're saying that, Miss, you forget 10 to the power of 6, you forget 10 power of 6, don't worry, I got you, I factorize. Okay, easier to press. And also because I don't have space to write. Lah. If you want to put it inside, also can, no problem. Okay, I just factorize everything because then it's easier to press my calculator. So let's see. You press together with me if you're watching the video. Because I can press doesn't mean you can press. You understand that, right, my friends? Okay, anyway, 620 divided by how many times you write the correct substitution but didn't get the right answer. Pain, pain. Okay, so this one is whatever that's outside the bracket. Okay, so 4 times 10 power 14 times 620 divided by 2 times 10 power 6. Now I'm going to multiply this one by 1 over 7.3 minus 1 over 7.3 form using this mode. Equal. Okay, I got big number. So instead of you manually imagining the dotted the the decimal point moving how about pressing the eng button okay so now you have 9.26 times 10 to the power of 7 okay so 9.26 times 10 to the power of 7 okay if you can't press your calculator you need to practice a bit especially with large numbers like this so this positive number shows whoops shows an increase in ke right this is positive here right so the positive here shows you that ke increases okay the question didn't ask i just want to take note in my brain ke will increase make sense what your r is less so your ek is more all right next Gravitational potential energy. Ooh, interesting. Okay, so what's the equation for gravitational potential en energy again? EP here would be negative GMM over R. So this one, this equation you have to know. If not, you cannot do. Law. So the change in potential energy, I will do the same thing again. I will take the final radius or the final potential energy minus the initial potential energy. Need to minus law. Okay. So now, um, be a bit careful because there's a negative sign there. But don't worry about it. GMM over final radius minus big bracket negative GMM over initial radius. Wow. Okay, come factorize again. You are pro already by now. You're like, ah, oh, I got you. Can take out this one. Okay, can. All right. So depending on <laughs> how pro you are, you will take out different things. Lah. Anyway, change in potential energy now will be equal to, you know what guys, I'm taking out the negative 2. You don't want to take out negative, also can. But I'm taking it out. Okay. So what I have now is negative GMM big bracket 
So if I've taken out the negative, what is left here is 1 over Rf minus 1 over Ri. Final radius, a uh, final orbital radius minus initial orbital radius. So negative. Do we have Gm, ladies and gentlemen? Oh yes, we do. Nah, 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 nah. 4 times 10 to the power of 14. Okay, I copy here. 4 times 10 to the power of 14. You can always flip to the front part of the question to double check. Mass of the satellite is 620. Okay, so finish already. Oh, nothing else. Oh. Okay, big bracket. 1 over RF. Oh, we can copy. Uh, miss. Oh, of course, la, we copy. La. We did something similar already. What? That's why I took out the negative. So I can copy all the answers. Or you flip it. Okay, NBD. Don't forget the prefix times 10 to the power of 6. So I'm just going to write here 1 times 10 to the power of 6. Or you can just write 10 to the power of 6. So now if you... Or your calculator hasn't crashed because you use a <laughs> digital version. You pull your calculator. I mean, just now you press already. Eh? You don't have to press again. But now I press. Okay, so do I have a negative? Okay, I'll put a negative here for you. Lah. Okay, 4 times 14 times 620. Okay, divided by 1 times 10 to the power of 6. Okay, then we will multiply this one bracket. 1 over 7.3 minus 1 over 7.34. So if your calculator didn't crash or you didn't close the calculator accidentally, then, or cancel everything, if you look at the calculation here, right, what you could do is you just change this 2 into 1. Just change this 2. I got the button. Show you, show you. Change this 2 into 1. Ah, if you change this 2 into 1, then you press your calculator again. The answer will be the same, add a negative in front. But if you're easily confused, you know what? Don't sweat it. Press again. Ta-da! Okay? So actually, if you are a bit aware, this one is times 2 will be this answer. Okay? So if I move this a bit, this will be negative 1.85 times 10 to the power of 8. Okay, so this one is negative 1.85 times 10 to the power of 8. Do you need to show this working? Yes. So there's, even if you can definitely shortcut your way, because this one is actually negative ke times 2, change in ke times 2, you can't just write this. Okay, so I'm just going to delete this. Showing the substitution matters. Show substitution clearly, my friends. Okay, so I'm going to put in. What do you think the negative sign stands for? Hmm? I miss, I know, I know. Positive increase. Negative decrease. Lo. Smart, smart. So smart. Like you're getting smarter every day. Good job. So this negative here shows that the potential energy decreases. Okay, makes sense. Potential decreases because it is also moving. Let me zoom out a bit. See, it is traveling closer towards the Earth. It's going from here pew, down to here. Okay, traveling to lower orbit. Okay. So, Ke increased by 9.26 times 10 to the power of 7. Pe decreases by this much. Okay. So, now... Using your answers in part 2, which is the change in kinetic and potential energy respectively, explain whether the linear speed of the satellite increases, decreases, or remain unchanged when the radius of the orbit decreases. Well, I guess you will just say, Ayo, this one need to ask me. Kinetic energy or the change in kinetic energy is positive. Hence... Kinetic energy increases. Hence the po potential energy, but not hence the speed increases. Okay. So speed increases because this one is positive. I guess the second question would be okay, this is extension now. Uh, I'm going to write here in different color. The second question would be, what happens to the total energy of the satellite? Extension. What about total energy? 
total energy, the equation, is a total mechanical energy specifically. As I call this ET, not extraterrestrial, just total energy. Total energy will be kinetic energy plus potential energy, correct? So your kinetic energy increases by this amount. But your potential energy decreases by a larger amount. So if I increase by 10 to the power of 7, but then another energy decreases by 10 to the power of 8, this means my total energy is actually dropping. Okay? So since the increase in Ke or increase in Ek, okay, let me zoom in a bit for the people. Uh, since the increase in Ek is greater than the decrease in potential energy, so hence total energy decreases. Okay, so only kinetic energy increase, total energy will decrease. You can watch a previous example video where I go into more detail about this. Okay, so that's the end of the question. But hold on for a bit. I want to show you a quick simulation about all these orbital speeds. Okay, so this is a simulation that we found on the internet, right? So you can see that there's a satellite here. So let me explain the arrow a bit. Ah. The yellow arrow is the orbital speed or the speed that you found just now, square root of uh, gm over r, okay? And uh, there's a radius here, it's low earth orbit, okay? And then this is obviously the, the blue arrow here is obviously the gravitational force or the force that allows the satellite to go wee 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 round round around the earth, okay? I'm going to press play now and then you can watch, wow, look at the white dots of this satellite tracing the orbit, okay? Oh, the satellite very chill, Okay, so one thing I want you to notice is, number one, the kinetic energy is positive. Of course, the kinetic energy must be positive because the, the thing is moving. Okay, number two, the second bar, even though I'm not sure whether you can see the text or not, this second bar is potential energy. Okay, the potential energy is negative and hopefully you know why potential energy is always negative. Okay, but the mechanical energy is the total between these two and this is negative. Okay. Make sense? So total energy is the first bar plus the second bar. Now let's try to change things up a bit. Okay, we know that when the satellite go to lower orbit, the speed actually uh, decreases, increases, increases, right? Okay, but let's say now I decrease the speed. Uh. Okay, I, I bring the speed close less and the kinetic energy is lesser. Let's see what happens. So just now in a nice circle is orbital speed. So now I decrease the speed. Now when I decrease the speed, satellite has crashed. Because satellite cannot maintain the orbit. The gravitational force is too strong. Okay, let me restart again. Let me say that, okay, miss, uh, very dangerous. Let's increase the speed. Great, let's go. So if I increase the speed, you will notice that Hey, hey, wait, 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 wait. This is not a circle. No, it's not. Uh, it looks a little bit like an ellipse. You are right. This is Kepler's second law. Okay. So in Kepler's second law, it talks about an elliptical orbit. So there are quite a few celestial objects that travels in elliptical orbit. Comets are one of them. So when it's on the far end of the ellipse, right, it actually slows down. You can see the separation between the white dots are closer. So it will slow down. And then after that, it will speed up and then slow down. If you're interested in this kind of rocket science, okay, this is obviously not in our syllabus, but if you're interested, this is when the orbital, this is when the satellite has an orbital speed of less than square root of gm over r. Okay, then you're like, okay, okay, pause. You notice that the mechanical energy is just negative. Okay, so let's say you, you look at this one. Uh, the speed will increase eventually. But it's actually an interplay between GPE and KE. So as the KE increases, this PE will be more and more negative. It will decrease. Okay, so maybe somewhere here. Less. Okay, so now I'm going to continue to take away speed from my satellite oh, no, wait, sorry increase speed of my satellite okay until 
the mechanical energy becomes slightly positive, just a little bit. Okay, so this is escape velocity. If I have a fast enough orbital speed, I have enough kinetic energy to counterbalance the potential energy. Then I have enough energy to travel to infinity. So let's look at this satellite. Satellite be like, I have enough energy. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. So you can see the satellite is actually nicely traveling away and it's just bye. Okay, thanks. Bye. Okay. So what orbit you take, let me pause a bit whether it's circular, the small one, elliptical, or you manage to escape the Earth's gravitational field and travel in a straight line to infinity and beyond, depends on the speed. If there is a way for me to boost my rocket, my satellite, such that it has enough kinetic energy so that the mechanical energy is no longer in the red, then we can escape. But so far, we can't. And then what we have now is... So far we can't, and what we have now is, uh, let me refresh, uh. we are stuck, we are stuck. Our mechanical energy is negative, and in order for us to escape, we need a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of rocket fuel to counterbalance. I need to up the speed a lot. Okay, a lot, a lot, see, so much. I need to up the speed a lot. Okay, so that's it for this part, and just for your benefit, I will crop and label this now. Okay, this is a better drawing of the crop. You will see that we are at circular orbit here, circle hall. This is when the orbital speed is equal to square root of gm. Hang on, let me adjust. Okay, so the circular orbit is gm over r. And this elliptical orbit is when the orbital speed Okay, I'm just going to call this V, okay? V. This orbital speed is great, greater than gm over r. Okay? But smaller than square root of 2gm over r. You may be wondering, where did I get this 2gm from? You can go and watch the lecture video around escape velocity or watch an example around escape velocity. Okay, so this one is when the velocity is greater than square root of 2gm over r. This is the k thanks bye. It was nice. So if you want to actually escape, we need enough kinetic energy to cover the very negative total energy of the satellite. But in our syllabus, we only stick to the circular orbit and escape velocity. So this one. V is equal to square. Do, you could memorize this, but I highly recommend you know the derivation because normally they will ask you to explain. So you will lose critical marks if you don't know how we got to this in the first place. But that will be another video for another day. All right, so that's it. Don't confuse whenever we have uh, things traveling in and out of orbit. Okay, refer to graphs, take your time to really brain this because it's pretty cool, especially if you have dreams of going outer space. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.